So I've been working on a personal project for a bit and I finally got to start using RenPy's speech balloon system. And honestly, it's gotta be my favorite thing that RenPy does right out of the box. It's easy to use, a breeze to customize, and I wish more developers would really take advantage of what this has to offer because it gives you an amazing amount of versatility. But before I start getting into like the nitty gritty of the speech balloon system and how to customize it for your own project, Let's go over some of its basic features. RenPy has three ways to display character dialogue text by default. ADV mode, NVL mode, and speech bubbles. ADV is the standard dialogue box, which displays one snippet of text at a time. And while you can change the position of the text box with some work, the actual text box stays the same size. So you need to make sure your dialogue fits within it. And VL mode is intended to fill the whole screen and it can keep previous text on screen as it's displayed. The more dialogue you add to it, it keeps the latest dialogue at the bottom and moves previous text off screen. Speech bubbles though are dynamic, which means the bubble can change size and position based on the amount of dialogue. And you can even change the design of the speech bubble on the fly. And to make a speech bubble, all you need to do is make a defined character with or without a name, give it an image tag, which I usually set to be whatever the name would be, put down kind equals bubble, and finally I usually put down retain equals true, and I'll explain what that's for later. My favorite part about it is that the speech balloon placement is stored using an internal system based on the unique string of text you have. So when you're messing with speech bubble placement, you never have to touch the code. You can just play a version of the game, use the editor with shift plus B, and you can place the text anywhere you want. Press area, and then your reticule will change into this red square here. Tap and drag to make the speech balloon as big or small as you want. Then on the right, tap properties to change the speech bubble style. By default, you have different positions of the balloon tail and a tailless balloon design, but you can also add your own custom styles really easily, and I'll get into that later. Then, tap to get to your next line of dialogue, and you can either choose to retain the previous bubbles or clear all the previous bubbles. Like I said, real easy to use. Now, full disclosure, I'm pretty sure this feature was made for me in particular. For my first VN, King of the Cul-de-Sac, I wanted to make a lot of dynamic scenes and compositions, and I found the traditional dialogue systems didn't work for me. So I painstakingly used show image to display each line of text, then placed a word balloon and a word balloon tail that I had to individually adjust the size and placement of. Oh, and the rotation, can't forget the rotation. It was a huge pain in the butt. Renpai's speech balloon system would have literally saved me dozens of hours, but there are a few limitations you want to keep in mind if this is something you want to use in your game. First off, perfectly rounded balloons are not advisable. The default balloon is made by splitting an image into a nine image grid. You can see this in the documentation. A frame takes an image and divides it into nine parts. The four corners, the four sides, and the center. The corners always remain the same size, the left and right sides are stretched vertically, the top and bottom sides are stretched horizontally, and the center is stretched in both directions. So for the standard word balloon, it's going in 55 pixels on the left, top and right, but on the bottom, it's going in 95 pixels. So if you use this frame method for your own word balloon, then your balloon won't stay ovular. It's going to get some weird corners like this. The second limitation is the balloon tail itself. In classic comics and manga, the word balloon tail should aim at the speaking character's mouth, which means the balloon tail would need a lot of different angles and lengths to match how traditional comics do it. The balloon tail by default just uses this same image, but it flips the image on the X and Y axes to get the different tail directions. Visually, I think it still works if you keep in mind the speaker's mouth position and make sure the tail swoops down if the balloon is above the mouth and swoop up if it's below the mouth and readers will get the idea Idea, but it's not perfect. And the last limitation is probably the biggest one. Every line of text is going to need to be hand placed. If you're making a VN with a huge amount of text, I'd advise using speech balloons sparingly, but if you have a dedicated artist, this is the perfect tool set to give them more control over scenes. And even if they aren't savvy enough to use GitHub to merge their branches with yours, it's really easy to merge their work with your programmer's code without too much fuss. One note though, if you ever change the dialogue, even a letter, 
it's going to reset your word balloon. So I usually recommend not worrying about individual word balloon placement until your script is finalized. But on the other hand, if you mess up something with this editor and you just need to, you know, oh no, I did want to retain previous stuff, you can just add a space into that line of text and it's going to reset it for you. Mixed bag. So as you can tell, there are some restrictions to how you'd want to use this, but if all that sounds pretty cool to you, let's get into how to use it for your own game. So first off, this is a feature available in RenPy versions 8.1 and beyond. So you'll want to make sure you update your version of RenPy. But if you're running on an older version, the official RenPy documentation for the speech balloon system has the screens and settings needed that you'll need to copy into your game. If you want a custom word balloon, the easiest thing is to adjust the default image directly and re-upload that into the GUI folder. But if you make a word balloon with different proportions, make whatever you want, keeping in mind the nine grid slices. So slice it up with four grid lines and then measure the number of pixels left, top, right, and bottom. Then in define bubble.frame, you'll wanna put down the image name of your new balloon and then those four pixel numbers in sequence. Blam, done. But let's say you wanted to tweak the text placement a little bit more. Like maybe instead of a traditional word balloon, you wanted a floating text box with a little name played on top of the character. No problem. The window style bubble underscore name box sets the name's alignment. Then for the text layout, it's using bubble underscore what? And you adjust the alignment of the text inside the word balloon with this little align thing here with this little tuple. This is gonna be the X alignment. This is gonna be the Y alignment. And for this name box, I kinda of want all the text to be on the left. So we're gonna set it to 0.1, just so it's mostly to the left, a little bit of padding. And then we need different colors for the name and body text. So I can adjust that here as well. Alternatively, if you want a custom color for each name, we can override the name setting with who underscore color for the name and with what underscore color for the body text, same as any other sort of dialogue. But let's say we wanted to add a different word balloon type entirely. We have the word balloons at different orientations, then a tailless thought word balloon. But what if we wanted a narration box? So for that, all we need to do is define a couple of new things. First, make the new bubble design and figure out the nine frame. And then we'll define it with bubble followed by whatever name we want for it. I'll go with narration frame and then the frame setup. Then we're gonna add an entry to bubble.properties. First off, add a comma to the previous last item in the set so RenPy knows it's a separate list item. And then add in quotations, whatever name we wanna show up on the speech balloon menu. So we'll set this as narration, colon, and then in these brackets, window underscore background and set that to our defined frame we already made. Finally, we also have bubble dot expand area, which is really just a matter of convenience. So when we use this on-screen method for setting the size of our word balloon, it doesn't consider the balloon tail to be part of that area. For a narration box, we don't have a balloon tail, so we'll set that to four zeros. And once we have that all in, you can see it's now part of our speech balloon menu. And while we're on this screen, while you can adjust the size of the word balloon, you'll notice the blocks where you can decide the size are each 1 24th of the total screen size. If you want more granular placement, you can go into the bubble screen and add define bubble.columns and bubble.rows and equal them to the number of total slices you want to split the screen into to determine the area. So set each for 48 and the rectangle will be half the size. This also seems like a good time to mention RenPy's click to continue like little graphic element, which I think they just added pretty recently, but it really gives these bits of dialogue a little bit of extra oomph. To add a click to continue icon, you'll go into the dialogue box and add CTC and then equal it to the image you want to use in quotations. In this case, I have an image and I want it to animate, so I just animate it with a custom definition here, just moving it 10 pixels to the right and to the left. Then you want to set how the click to continue button is placed. So put down CTC underscore position and then equal it to nestled or fixed in quotations. Nestled just puts it at the end of a line of dialogue, while fixed places it wherever it would be on screen if you just placed it. This works great for text boxes, and I could also see it working well for NVL mode, but for speech bubbles, you'll probably want to stick with nestled. Finally, where does RenPy keep all the positions for the balloons? 
As you can see, after you change the position of the balloons, it doesn't update the dialogue at all in your code. Okay, this is super fun. It saves all the balloon editor information in bubble.json. Every line of dialogue is converted into a shortened string code, and then the positional property and retain information is saved right in here. So if you have a separate team member just handling placement of the balloons, they can send you their bubble.json file, and you can integrate that in your main code. So that's really all I know about how to work with the speech balloon system so far. I've really only just started messing around with it and I'm finding different ways to tweak it over time just to make it work for me. So if you see any like particularly great implementation of this out in the wild, like let me know. I want to steal it, see it, see it. Just, I just want to see it. And I'll see you in the next video.